Hey guys, Hop here. This rifle is the start of a new project build for the channel. I've been doing a lot of shooting of 308 ARs lately, like the SIG Tread 716i and the Ruger SFAR. Both of those are highly proprietary rifles. They have a lot of components that can't be replaced and are basically unlike anything else on the market. Also, they tend to be a little bit more on the lightweight battle rifle side of the equation. This is an Aero M5. This is as close to standard as you're going to get for the 308 AR platform. This is basically just a DPMS LR-308 rifle. This also is set up a little bit more like a precision rifle. And that's kind of the point of this build. I want to try out a rifle that's a little bit more standardized so I can actually play around with a little bit more of the aftermarket. The DPMS LR-308 aftermarket is substantially bigger than the Ruger SFAR or the SIG 716. SIG 716, I think you can replace the muzzle device and the lower parts, and that's about it. The SFAR, I made a video about what you can do on the SFAR. Uh, quite a lot, but still nothing you can really do to change the core behavior of the rifle. The Aero M5 has pretty much the entire DPMS LR-308 aftermarket available to it, which is large by 308 AR standards. It's not even close to as big as what's available for the AR-15, but still substantially more options for aftermarket parts to tune, outfit, set this thing up the way we want it. This video was actually made possible by the dudes over at arftac.com. If you guys remember a while back, they sent me a lovely bouquet of gas-busting charging handles to do a comparison on. They also sent me some dog treats that looked so gourmet, I thought they were beef jerky and I almost ate them. That was a close one. So they got in touch, asked me if I was doing any more projects they could help out with, and it just so happened I had an Aero M5 lower that I wanted to set up for uh, sort of a nothing fancy sapper, semi-automatic precision rifle 308 build. So they sent me the parts I needed to complete this thing. They also sent me some more dog treats, uh, but I don't have a dog, so just fed them to Brass Fax dog Nova. She seemed to like them. And they also sent me some cat treats for my timeshare cat, Mr. Sacco. So, special thanks to ArfTac. Those guys are awesome. They have a great website with a lot of AR and Glock components. All good stuff. There's no, like, garbage filler product on there. Pretty small selection, but they are growing it steadily. And one of the things that they do is Aero M5 parts and uppers. Check them out. There's going to be a link in the link tree in the video description over to ArfTac. They're good dudes. Let them know that you like dogs, and they will send you some delicious dog treats. And apparently they're safe for human consumption, just in case. So the objective for this project is to build an Aero M5, set it up as a semi-automatic precision gun, see what kind of mileage or yardage, I guess, we can get out of the 308 cartridge, what kind of accuracy, how easy is this thing to suppress, to tune for suppression, is it reliable, does it hold up? That's all stuff we're going to be trying to test going forward. It's probably going to take a while because ammunition, especially 308 ammunition, is pretty expensive. So why did I build out an Aero M5 instead of just buying an Aero M5 upper? Because they make those in 16, 18 and 20 inch barrel lengths. It's basically the exact same thing that I've got here. They use an Atlas rail, Aero upper, Aero bull carry group, etc. The reason to build rather than buy an M5 upper is because of barrel profile. Aero's M5 barrels are made by Ballistic Advantage. Ballistic Advantage has three different profiles of barrel. They have a heavy barrel, they have a government contour barrel, and they have a Hansen profile barrel. But Aero only uses the heavy barrels in their pre built uppers for whatever reason. And uh, as much as I intend for this to be an accurate or somewhat semi-precision rifle, I just cannot justify a thick barrel like that. The, the weights on those things are just insane. So I built basically the exact same thing, except this has an 18 inch Ballistic Advantage Hanson barrel, and it's got a Ballistic Advantage marked bolt carrier group instead of an arrow one. Other than that, it's all arrow parts. I mean, if you build or buy from Ballistic Advantage, you're gonna get arrow parts as well, because same company. Choosing to build an M5 has a couple of consequences. Uh, I've been building AR-15s for a very long time and I have all the tools needed to build them. I've got Magpul, Bev block, Vice block inserts, all sorts of stuff like that for working on the AR-15 platform. AR-10 platform or DPMS LR-308, not so much. So if you are a veteran AR-15 builder, you may still have to buy some new tools if you want to build yourself an M5 or any other DPMS LR-308. Or if you just buy one, you're probably gonna want the tools to maintain it yourself. So either way, yeah, you're, you're investing in a new set of tools. Let's go over the parts on this build and why I picked them, if this airplane will leave me alone. 
All right, luckily this is a pretty standard build. Most of it is just arrow parts with the exception of the ballistic advantage barrel and bolt carrier group. So we got an upper lower receiver set, just regular arrow M5. This takes pretty much all the standard AR-15 lower parts. So regular Magpul MOE grip, regular mil-spec lowers. I'm knocking dust from the stupid plant on there, but I don't care. It's gonna be a nightmare for continuity if I have to reshoot this, so hopefully I don't. Anyway, lower parts kit, very standard. Regular safety selector, I just don't give a shit about any of that anymore. Regular Magpul MOE grip. Uh, the trigger is a Schmid two-stage, probably my favorite uh, accuracy-focused trigger you can get for the ARs um, because it's excellent and it's very affordable. You can also get them at arftac.com. Plug. Buffer system is the Aero Enhanced Buffer Tube. All that really is is a slight reprofiling of the buffer tube. Uh, nothing really enhanced about it, to be honest. Also, it's slightly unenhanced because you cannot use those with a Magpul PRS Lite stock. The stock will slide off because the necessary hump to keep it in place is in the wrong spot. I'm not a huge fan of the PRS Lite stock anyway. As it turns out, it's just not my jam. So, this has got a Magpul SL stock. This also has the thicker recoil spacer on the back. Definitely makes it a little bit more comfortable when shooting 308. I have the additional spacer on my 716i as well, although that's the one for the uh, Magpul CTR stock, not the SL. Buffer weight in here right now is the standard 308 buffer, which is essentially H1 weight. It's about 3.8 ounces, so similar to an H1 weight on an AR-15 buffer, but because the buffer tube is the same length, but the bolt carrier group is so much longer than an AR-15, there are shorter buffers for use with 308s. That's one of the things we're going to talk about when we talk about suppression and tuning, is uh, availability of buffer weights and, you know, kind of the limits of what you can do with just buffer weight tuning. In the upper receiver, we've got a Ballistic Advantage Nitride Bolt Carrier Group and a Radian Raptor Charging Handle. The barrel is the 18-inch Hansen Profile 308 barrel. It's not the one with the very small gas block journal. Uh, they have these available in two different gas block journal sizes, 0.875 and 0.750, I believe, are the two. 750 would be the same uh, typical gas journal as on an AR-15. So if you had a 0.750 gas block, adjustable gas block that you really wanted to use, then you would want to get a 750 Hansen barrel, not the 875. Most of those adjustable gas blocks can be had in larger sizes. This, however, just a Hansen barrel, so slightly reduced barrel profile, and the low profile gas block is not adjustable. It is also pinned in place. This is an 18 inch barrel with a mid-length gas system and the barrel is made out of 416 stainless and then nitrided. So this is a black barrel, but it's a stainless barrel, just in case you were wondering. Initial accuracy testing has been very good, but that's something we'll talk about more comprehensively after I've had a chance to run quite a lot more ammunition through it. The handguard is an Aero Atlas R1 15-inch rail. These are pretty good rails. They're a little frustrating to install because you have to time the barrel nut, potentially using shims, even though it's just a, uh, a friction system. They have this kind of cool turnbuckle screw that pinches from both sides, and, you know, everybody's got their own way of applying tension onto a barrel nut. This is one of the ways you can do it. I don't know if it's better or worse than the other ways. I do know it's bizarre that you have to time the barrel nut even though the handguard just attaches with friction. Uh, but you have to do that in order to get the gas tube into the upper receiver. Kind of peculiar, a little more difficult to install than uh, maybe it has to be, but there's certainly nothing wrong with these handguards, in my opinion. Got a Magpul Paraclip adapter for sling attachment here. No sling attachment on the receiver end plate because I cannot stand when my sling attaches back there. Magpul rail scales, Magpul vertical grip. Vertical grip far to the rear because if I have to take a standing accurate shot, I find it a lot easier to support the rifle farther back towards the receiver rather than way out of the front C-clamp style. Uh, there was a Magpul M-Lock bipod on there, but I stole it and put it on the uh, hop mod and the one that I ordered to put on here hasn't come in yet. The muzzle device currently is a Reardon DPB dual port brake. That means that we can use this thing with a suppressor. I've got an Atlas uh, adapter on my Resonator K. So I'm gonna try shooting this thing unsuppressed and suppressed and uh, you know see if that's even really viable for a precision rifle um, with this sort of a, a suppressor attachment system. So something to experiment with. I suspect I don't wanna shoot this thing suppressed most of the time. 
but we'll find out and talk about that later on. The optic combination is the Leupold Mark V HD 3.6 to 18. This is a pretty awesome scope, but it's also incredibly expensive. And it's also a 35 millimeter scope, which is a weird size and there are not a lot of rings available for it. So this is a Leupold 35 millimeter Mark AR mount. And this has the ring topper that allows you to direct mount a little uh, optics plate for a Delta Point Pro. So. Loophole, loophole, loophole. I love it when the brands match. I wish I didn't. I wish my brain was better than that, but it's not. Laser module is the US Night Vision Designate IR, Designator, Designate IR. Uh, this is the dual laser beam only version. This is not the IRV, which is the version that has a Vixel illuminator as well. It, there's really no reason to have an illuminator on this thing. If anything, this laser would be used for its original purpose, which is to designate if for some reason I was set up in a position where I needed to point out something to somebody with a laser. This is quite a strange laser box, but it is quite cool because it's, it's extremely flat and that means it does not get in the way of an optic in the slightest. Since the magnified shooting experience of this gun is very important, that's a nice feature to have indeed. All right, that is the build. I'll tell you guys a little bit about the initial shooting impressions of this thing. Uh, when it was freshly assembled, reliability was not so good. I think that Hanson barrels tend to be a little bit on the undergassed side, which is one of the things that I like about them. So seems like uh, perhaps it was just a little bit of a break in, maybe the first 50 rounds or so. It would not cycle with 7.62 spec ammunition. This is technically a 308 uh, chambered barrel, not 762 by 51. They are almost identical, but 308 ammo tends to be higher pressure, or at least it used to. I don't know how true that is anymore, but that's always been the, uh, the conventional wisdom. So maybe the uh, gas system sealed itself up, maybe the gun just sort of, you know, seated itself together and wore in, but either way, it has been reliable after that point. I've done a little bit of shooting with this suppressed and unsuppressed. Uh, shooting it suppressed has not been my favorite experience. I don't like adjustable gas blocks. I guess I could try one out for this, but I have no intention to. What I am going to do is get a bootleg adjustable carrier for the DPMS LR308. They actually do make those now. Maybe they've made them for a while, but I only found out about them recently. As far as accuracy goes, this thing has been able to do some pretty impressive groups sub minute five shot groups with uh, federal gold metal match and IMI M118 LR. Those are the two 308 precision loads that I know of. The real topic of conversation is ultimately going to be about how viable a precision 308 gas gun is in square brackets current year because of course this could very easily have been a 6.5 Creedmoor build. Nothing would have changed about this rifle except it would have recoiled less. The ammunition would have been probably a little bit more accurate, probably a little bit more expensive but not as expensive as you might think. Another alternative to this would of course have been a bolt action rifle, which would have been significantly lighter and quite a lot cheaper and still capable of the same level of accuracy. So that's another question we're going to have to address is the addition of some automatic firepower and detachable 20 round magazines really worth the stretch. There's definitely going to have to be a very long and drawn out POU discussion to talk about what Nut and Fancy would call probably a sapper or perhaps a team rifle. This is not the sort of thing that uh, somebody on your crew is going to just be running and gunning with. This seems to me like the kind of rifle that you deploy out of the back of a truck or in a static position only when you really need it. If I was going to be uh, investing into the battle rifle platform, the SIG 7.16i is still probably my go-to pick. Maybe the Ruger SFAR could be flexed into that role. Still not so sure how I feel about that one. If I wanted a lightweight 308 hunting rifle, SFAR all day, absolutely. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to support my channel, you could do so by subscribing because it's YouTube and YouTube likes that kind of stuff. Also, there's a link in the video description to my Subscribestar page. If you join up, you'll get access to early videos, bonus videos, bonus cat pictures, and access to archived live shows that I do with Mr. Brassfax and guests. Sometimes there are guests. There's also a link tree link in the video description, which will take you to a page of links with uh, sponsors, affiliates, social media, other stuff like that. It's worth checking out if you uh, have nothing better to do. So go ahead and click on that one. There will be a link to ArfTac there. I suggest you check them out or just go to ArfTac.com. That's Arf as in the sound a dog makes when you give it a treat that was sent to you by ArfTac.com. All right, thanks for watching, guys. See you later. I don't know where to go, what to do. 
You're talking about life or shooting? Yeah. Okay. I hear drugs help. That's why you drink so much. Okay, so there's actually a lot more wind than I thought, or my zero is slightly off at this point. We're all holding fucking left, and it's not enough left. Yeah, I was holding just the tiniest bit left, and I switched to an extra an extra minute of left, and all of a sudden... Minute of left. Minute of left is a scientific term that means left. <laughs> 